NBA Weekly. That game two, uh, Clippers versus Phoenix was was exciting as ever, man. Um, I must say, before I even dive into everything and talk about everything that y'all know that I'm, I'm about to talk about, I must say, as a basketball fan, I am on cloud nine. You know, I know a lot of people have had a lot of different things to say about it. Oh, it ain't no LeBron, ain't no KD, ain't no Steph. None of the big stars are in the last four. Yada yada yada. Yeah, man, listen, as a basketball fan. I've had very, very, uh, very good memories and enjoyment over the last decade or so seeing rivalries and, you know, uh, the super teams and LeBron and the Cavaliers against the Warriors. Even earlier in the decade, it was the Celtics and the Lakers going at it. You know, that's all been fun and, and, and exciting in its own way. But I will say as a basketball fan, for us to have a year that we've been having uh, this season has been it's super, super exciting, man, especially when you think about everything that we had to go through in the last year of 2020 with the pandemic and the bubble and the, the league being suspended for the amount of time that it was. And it was just different and weary, no fans, something that we all had to unite and get through together. A lot, a lot of, you know, low moments and we all stuck together and, 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 and made it this far. So to see us come out of all of that, get back to regular basketball, we got fans back. And, you know, for us to have these final four teams so unpredictable, you know what I mean? No Brooklyn, no L.A., uh, even Philly as the number one seed is out. You know, no Lakers or Heat like it was last year. It's just incredible. And and, and to, to get this game in a series that we got tonight, um, as, as, as crazy as it was, it's just a testament of how exciting and unpredictable that this season has been. And as a basketball fan, I'm really trying to enjoy that and soak it all in because, I, like I said, man, I, I get it. I get the super teams. Um, you know, I, I, I enjoyed it when it was there. But I honestly think that it's nothing better in the NBA or basketball in general than unpredictability. I think that's why March Madness, year in and year out, is always one of the most watched and most talked about things, even by people who don't keep up with the NCAA or know who's a top freshman or top uh, player of the year candidate. People that don't even know that information, year in and year out, they fill out brackets and they sit there and they watch and they anticipate March Madness because it's so unpredictable. You never know what you're about to get. And I think that's the beauty of the tournament. So for these playoffs to have been the way that they've been, even with injury, because that's a part of the game, it's really been refreshing and really exciting as a pure basketball fan. For one second, I just wish everybody would remove themselves from their favorite players or favorite teams and really get the enjoyment of the unpredictability that we've gotten all season. Even tonight with the draft lottery, which I'll do, I'm going to do another video on that in its own right but even that was just unpredictable and the way it turned out was so fun and now that we have the draft order and even with the prospect it's still some unpredictability on how this draft can go because it's it can just go so many ways you know what i mean and that we're not even talking about trading picks and trading up and down yet just from where the teams are slotted to the prospects in the hierarchy of, or the top five prospects it's so hard to see who's going where outside of Kay cunningham which last year, it's like, okay, we know Melo, Edwards, and Wiseman are for sure the top three picks. We just don't know the order. And with this draft, I can see who could be the top three. But then at the same time, I look at a team like the Cavs at three who has guards. So would they feel comfortable taking Jalen Green when they already have Garland and Sexton and they just drafted a Coro? Uh, are they, would they do that? Or even if, they, if he was off the board... They just got Jared Allen, who they're going to sign. Are they going to feel comfortable getting Evan Mobley? I mean, I can see them pairing up together and being a 4-5 tandem. Um, but it's just a lot of different ways that this, that it can go. And I think that's what makes basketball exciting. And I just wanted to get that off my chest before we dive into this game. This game was crazy. I, I really don't have any breakdowns or nothing crazy to talk about or discuss besides that ending. Um, you all know me. I'm a big Paul George fan. I'm a big Devin Booker fan. My cousin, Javon Carter, um, out of West Virginia is with the Suns. So obviously with this series, I win anyway. You know what I mean? If the Suns finish the series in the next two games and sweep them, I won't complain at all. I'll be just as happy if the Clippers came back and won the series. You know what I mean? Like I literally cannot lose. So I'm watching from just enjoyment and excitement. And I think it's been one of the best things I've experienced in a long time as a fan. But Paul George, Paul George, PG-13, a lot of y'all call it Pandemic P and all of that, what, what not, um, but Paul George, 
it's 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 the craziest thing that I I think I've seen with a player, man, in this in this last minute of a game because we're talking about a situation where Paul George was at one point the hero. Um, I don't you know down the stretch him and him and Book were going at it and Book gave the Suns the lead and Paul George came right back and gave the go ahead bucket and it looked like that was going to be the bucket that would give the Clippers the lead and they would ultimately win the game as long as he knocked down these free throws and then if, at the worst the Suns would come down and tie the game with a three and we would just go into overtime. That that's the worst possibility that could happen at the end of regulation is that they hit a game winning three and the Clippers just have to play them in overtime. But of course, Paul George, um, who for some reason, man, this, these situations just come, that just keep coming to find him no matter what, even when he has, you know, uh, as good of a playoffs he is, he, he, it's somehow, and, and it's, I don't even want to say it's always his fault, but somehow these situations where he could mess it up or be the laughing stock, always just find him. I don't know what's going on, but yeah. And I remember being in a party, through the wires in a party with a couple of our other homies. And the stat goes up when Paul George is at the free throw line, 26 points and ESPN showed five of eight from the free throw line. Me as a Paul George fan, I say, come on, Paul George. Let's, let's end this up. Come on, make these two, man. Let's, let's do what we do. We no time for the, be- the, the, the bullshit. It can trail in my ear, King of the Fourth Quarter. It's like, man, he missed three free throws. Man, he could he could miss these or miss one. He misses the first. I say, whoa, wow. Okay, cool. You missed one. Just make the next one. Put everybody at ease. Let's regroup and get this thing together. I'm sitting there and I watch. Doink, he misses the second one. Call the timeout for the Suns. They got to, of course, put together a play. And it feels like the longest timeout I've ever seen as a viewer. Because all in my mind, I'm thinking, okay, if Devin Booker makes this, I won't be upset because that's my boy and the Suns are 2-0. But, man, I am feeling sorry for Paul George because they're going to let him have it. And even guys like me who love and defend Paul George any way that they can, we won't be able to be present today because that is unexcusable. It's inexcusable. Even the biggest Paul George supporter can't defend two missed free throws and clutch and you lose the game. So I won't lie. At that point, I begin to root for the Clippers just for the simple fact that I didn't want my boy to catch all of this heat that unfortunately he's about to get now. And man, they get the they get the inbound in. Clippers do a magnificent job doubling Booker to get the ball out of his hands. He does an incredible job as an unselfish teammate. Uh, gets it to Crowder, swings it one more to Mikael Bridges. Mikael Bridges a little off, something with the rebound and tipping, tapping, and a go out of bounds, it gives them point nine. Now I'm thinking to myself, okay, cool. All they got to do is tip this ball out of the air because they may throw it at the rim. I don't really see anybody coming, catching, and shooting it. Even if Devin Booker does, it's going to be a tough shot, and you'll just live with that. So, like I said, I, obviously when you look at point anything, and you, you know it's going to the rim. But somehow, man, it just seems like the Clippers were the only people in the world that wasn't expecting or understanding that that was going to be the look the Suns are going to try to do. And my gosh, what a play drawn up by Monty Williams. He gets credit. Aiden gets credit with the finish. Devin Booker set an immaculate, incredible screen on Zubak. And my gosh, the unsung hero that nobody's going to probably give credit to, but I have to because I understand how difficult it is as a basketball player, as a guy that played basketball. That pass that Jay Crowder threw was on the money. It wasn't an inch too high or an inch too low. I'm talking about target, 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 and all Aiden had to do was dunk it in. I'm, you cannot throw a better pass. I, I, I kid you not, I think if Jay Crowder had to throw that pass five more times, it wouldn't be as perfect as it was. I'm I, Like, that was as perfect as a pass, and I don't think a lot of people are going to give him the credit because, of course, Aiden is the one that put it in, and rightfully so, Aiden should should, should uh, get get a lot of the credit and the attention. Aiden has been, to me, the, the difference maker in the series. Devin Booker leads the charge for the Suns, and tonight he didn't have the game that he had in game one. He struggled a bit, turned the ball over a lot, got into foul trouble. Uh, but he made the shots down the stretch, which is what you rely on your best player to do. And I will uh, give Devin Booker that credit to understand that, hey, I'm struggling, but mentally I still have to to make these shots and I can't get too low. Uh, the same way that when you're scoring and you're doing your thing, you can't get too high because it's, you can have 40 points in the first half, but down the stretch, if you're not making it happen, then it, it's irrelevant. So as a scorer, I always appreciate guys with Devin Booker's type of mentality. You never get too high or get too low. 
because that last five minute, three minute, two minute, last minute stretch is where it matters. No matter what you did in the first 46 minutes of the game, them last two is where it counts. So if you had 40 in the first 46, but you went off three in the last two minutes and your team lost, nobody really probably cares about the 46 points. And all they're probably going to talk about is in the last two minutes, you missed three crucial big time shots. Same thing when Devin Booker, you're struggling. Nobody cares if you have under 20 points or if you missed uh, 11 shots and only made five or six because down the stretch, you answered the call and you made the right shots. That's the right play. And that's what happened. Uh, the Phoenix Suns are now 2-0 headed to the, the Clippers who they're not going to get Kawhi Leonard back. Um, you know, I, it, it makes sense that Kawhi and his team and the Clippers are probably trying to be real secretive and real low-key with Dylan, the announcement of his injury and, and how it's going to get handled and all that because he does have a, a, a off season ahead of him, which he would have a player option and could potentially opt out. And even if he's just going to stay with the Clippers, you know what I mean? It could affect his money um, with, a, with a significant ACL injury if he had to get surgery or anything like that. So I understand, and I know his team is probably trying to get a second or third option and, and, and cross um, every T and dot every I to make sure that there's no way in hell or he can play in this series. Because I'm sure if there is a way that he can play, Kawhi probably would, but then again, you don't know. You don't know. You never know how people judge their bodies and what route they want to take it. But I I do, at the end of it, and the point I'm trying to make, I understand why it's real low-key, but I do think that Kawhi Leonard won't return to this, this series, which is why this win would have been so crucial for them. And I think because you're going to go back to L.A., which may give them two games, a two-day break. It's usually a one-day break. They play this day off day and then they play the next day but because they're traveling to la even though it's not that long of a of a travel they may get them two days rest and that could be enough time to now implement chris paul back into the series with a 2-0 lead and as good as the clippers have played 0-2 all playoffs um part of the reason was because they had Kawhi leonard you know what i mean they haven't been 0-2 in the series without Kawhi leonard um and it's going to be a different situation because this phoenix suns team isn't your normal team you know what i mean like the Mavericks played great those first two games, but they kind of played irregular. You know what I mean? The, uh, Tim Hardaway Jr. was 11 of 17 from three uh, during those first two uh, two or three games where the, the Mavericks were looking crazy. And Dorian Finney-Smith had a great game where he made like four or five threes. And even the Jazz, you know, they just came out lighting it up and, and, and making a crazy amount of shots. But these two games, the Suns won. They played their brand of basketball. They haven't done anything irregular. And, and actually... We won a game where Devin Booker probably had his worst game in the entire playoffs. That's a game that the Clippers have to win. They have to win. So it's going to be very interesting seeing the, the adjustments that Tyron Lue makes because I have to give Tyron Lue his credit thus far in the playoffs when they've gotten 0-2 or when it gets to game three or they go home or they go to wherever the series is switching sides at, he makes his adjustments timely there. And for some reason, the Clippers have played all year their best basketball with their back on the wall. So we got to give them some benefit of doubt and understand that this series is far from over. But I do also want to give Phoenix a benefit of doubt and say, hey, they haven't really played any games this offseason. I mean, this postseason. When they've gotten a lead and they've had a chance to X their opponents out, they do it. They do it. They, they put the foot to the neck. Um... And, 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 and they execute. They execute when they have that kill shot, man. And they're as dangerous as a team when they can pull off a win like this with Devin Booker playing as, 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 as bad as he did. I don't even want to call it bad, but, you know, playing below his standards and then no Chris Paul for down to pull his win off is impressive. And, and that's what makes it exciting, man. And that's why it, it, it's hard to root against the, the Suns, even if you are a Clipper fan. I'm, I'm a Knicks fan, so I don't really have a stake in the series. And like I said, it's two of my favorite players, plus my cousin, uh, getting a chance to get to the finals for the first time is exciting. But, boy, watching the Suns play and, and seeing how well Monty Williams coach, um, you know, it, 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 they're, they're just they're just excellent, man. And, and to see two, two blackhead coaches battle it out the way that they are, Oh, man, it's incredible. And James Jones being a black executive and, and, you know, putting his team together and double down. And and Monty Williams, you know, even from last year, the Suns are just hard to root against, man. I'm I'm really all rooting for the Suns. um, And and I hope that either one of these teams can can finish the job if they're able to advance to the next round because it would be be extremely exciting to watch because – 
especially Phoenix. Like the Clippers, I had I predicted the Clippers going to the finals against the 76ers was my preseason prediction. So I guess it wouldn't be that far fetched. But I don't know anybody in the world who was predicting that the Suns would make it. And if the Hawks somehow pull off some more magic in this Eastern Conference Finals to get the Buc- against the Bucks and we get a Hawks versus Suns Finals, that would be incredible. Two African American coaches going at it in a in a finals that I don't know if that's ever been done. Two unpredictable teams, as unpredictable as them. Two nice emerging stars, Trey Young superstars, Trey Young and Devin Booker. It would be super exciting, man. Um, I'm interested to see Game Three. Uh, I know a lot of the jokes are going to be on, on focused on Paul George for the rest of the night until they play again. But uh, the series is far from over. If it's one thing we've learned from this season and these playoffs, um, especially with the Clippers, is that no series is over, and that this season has been unpre- as unpredictable as you can expect. Man, this is a series where we went to sleep and one and woke up one night and Kawhi is out with a knee thing and Chris Paul is out with COVID protocols and. It, it just has been as unpredictable as, as whatever. So um, I feel like we're just getting started, and, and, and this shit is a very, very long way um, of, of ending. Or at least if it does end quicker than I we're all expecting, because I don't think nobody expected the Suns to sweep them at all, um, it, it's going to go out with a bang. It's going to go out with a bang, and it's been super exciting. And as a basketball fan, I think everybody could agree that this is, this is, this is great. This is better than... You know, what we've gotten over the last few years, man. Unpredictability, great basketball, high intensity, good coaching, and new guys stepping up to a different level and and, and introducing themselves as superstars, you know, and and, and showing that they belong here on the biggest stage with the biggest names. And it's it's, it's been truly refreshing. Um, As always, the host of um, NBA Weekly, P with a plug. Always leave your comments and thoughts. I love to hear what y'all are saying, man. Y'all always drop some gems and different perspectives. Um, so I appreciate y'all with the feedback and, and just different um, conversation notes and things like that. If you're new, please subscribe. Leave a like as always. And I will see you guys very soon because we have another series that's about to start. And I don't think the craziness is about to die down. Uh, we'll have some draft stuff in the next couple days because the draft lottery was crazy as well. Um, and yeah, we'll be starting the uh, What's Next series too for all of the teams that uh, got the boot out of the playoffs. And um, I'll see y'all soon.